Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sina Kashuk. I'm a data scientist at uh, Uber and I am exusiastic. Well, I don't know how to call it exusiastic, is that correct? <laughs> anyway, so uh, my talk today is about a kind of a spatial intelligence, but not really. Uh, it's more of a challenges that we have when, when uh, we want to get something out of the data that we have in our hand, but more of a spatial data. Um, so how we all are familiar with the data pyramid is just not pyramid anymore. It's just upside down. I understand that. But um, so when we're looking at our data and we want to get some wisdom out of it, uh, there are certain phases that we have to go through to get to, you know, the wisdom that we are all, you know, seeking for called intelligence, basically, right? Um, in spatial domain, though, um, the, the, the most um, amount of time that is spent for doing any uh, kind of data to uh, any inside delivery is more of a, more of a, uh, cleaning part or better to say data to the information part and the reason for that is because we have tons of different information we have variety of information we have gps we have uh, traffic data we have weather anything you call it right and then we want to we want to kind of get that raw data and get some information out of it right and it's not only that we have also different type of measurement we have points when it comes to spatial we have points we have polygon uh, line uh, raster uh, we also have different kind of um, aggreg aggre uh, aggregation level. Uh, we, ha we, can, we can do it in a street block. We can do it in, in um, a census track level. And uh, it, it is hard. It is hard. Why? Because uh, if you don't have anything that is uh, kind of unified or uh, kind of cross-functionable or cross-referenceable, it's very hard to do any uh, sort of analysis. So uh, to... To, to solve this problem, what we could do is um, finding the right spatial unit and then bring everything to that unit and then we can, then, then your data is gonna talk to each other, right? And the way that it works is like, uh, you have tons of options. You, you can take anything that you have, for example, your traffic and just throw it in, in, in the street level data. You can do that also for places or a census track. But there are all sorts of other uh, grid systems that you can use, like Mercator and 100 others, as, as the uh, GIS community is always talking about which one is the best one. And then Google came and said, well, S2, S2 is the future, uh, Hilbert Curve, awesome, you know, amazing, which is amazing, right? And then we came and we said, well, H3, as you hear Cameron talk about, you know, you know how, how we get to this point. And uh, you've seen this before, but the reason that I put this here is why uh, not S2 and H3 when it comes to, again, uh, spatial analytics. This is not a search. If it was a search, S2 is fantastic. S2 is great, right? But it's beyond um, just finding a certain place. It's about measuring that. So if you want to measure anything, you want to make sure that what you're measuring, the density that you're looking at is consistent to some extent. It doesn't need to be perfect, right? But as you know, the top one, San Francisco, the bottom one, uh, head, head, uh, head, uh, Uber headquarters in San Francisco, that, that pink color, and uh, Amsterdam in the bottom. If you want to run your business in a global level, you want to have something that when you say 20, the 20 is always 20 all, all around the world, or close to 20, maybe, uh, you know, 19 and a half and something like that. Not really 15, right? So, um, and you can see in the left, uh, the shape not only distorts, but also, you know, the, the volume is, uh, or, or the surface itself changes. So, the geometry changes, the area changes, and how you can guarantee a, you know, right spatial analytic. And on top of that, then when you have that, you want to do some sort of a smoothing, then am I going to do, if, if you're coming from, I don't know, uh, computer vision background, are you going to do eight connected uh, or four connected you know, analytics? That's what we, we always do, right? Or maybe we do both of them, and at the end, we make the decision which one we're going to take, the one that looks better, right? But you don't need to be worried about eight connected or six connected. You have always... Uh, or eight or four connected, you always have six connected. You don't need to be worried. The distance is always the same. So that's a really, really powerful, you know, property that I found in love myself before anyone. I, I feel like I saw it at Uber. It's like, oh my God, 
10 years, I was looking for something like this. I saw it in a paper. I saw it that, you know, we have something called Hexagon. I never saw it in a real world until, you know, I joined Uber about a year ago. Next week is my Uber, uh, Uberversity, basically. But anyway, yeah, yay. Uh, so the solution, now how we can do that? Before I move on, uh, not HC team, but anyone else, any suggestion of what is this? No? What is that? Maybe, any, any other, no? Maybe, eh, guess, no guess? It is whatever it is, it's the elevation. You always look at, oh, what is that? What is that bar? It's elevation, right? It's elevation. It's whatever it shows, right? Don't think <laughs> too much, right? So, um, so how we can hexagonify? Let me just quickly, you know, I'm a data scientist. It's supposed to show some code in my presentation. It doesn't, doesn't make sense to not show. So I have a notebook, which um, the link is at the end, uh, and, and you can go through it, right? Now this is, don't worry, don't worry. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not, this is not a workshop, right? This is just showing what you can do. Basically, the way that it works is shows, uh, this, this notebook shows how you can get your data. Let's say if you have a, a, a 311 data set. Anyone knows what is 311? Suggestion? Yeah. Well, 311 is a, a call center for you know, non-emergency calls. Like let's say if your neighbor is making a lot of noises, you call 311 and say, hey, my neighbor is making noise. And then they take the Latin long on that, that location and then put it in a map and saying, noisy neighbor, right? And they have uh, hundred thousands of points. This is exactly hundred thousand point of sample points of uh, New York City noises. As you can see, you see nothing there, right? Because it's all points, you can't do anything with them. And then maybe you can translate them in a hexagon and you see some sort of pattern. It's like, you know, down in uh, financial districts, people are, seems to be, more noisy, but then we have something called spatial smoothing. Very simple, if you apply it, it's just gonna take a fraction of a second, and then you start seeing kind of, you know, spatial pattern, right? You can do similar thing if you have a polygon data set. Uh, let's say this is a census tract population. You can just go and first of all, get all of the hexagon, get all of the hexagon within your boundary. You do a quick join, and now here's your data in. Hexagon, you hexagonified. You can then smooth it using some sort of a Gaussian, uh, you know, uh, distribution. And then here's beautiful uh, map of population, just using census tract data, right? And there are tons of other things, income, whatever you wanna, you know, use. You can. It's actually in a notebook. You can actually find whatever you want, and then then plot it. You can have fun with this, right? And then uh, the fun part that Isaac mentioned is about like you know hierarchical. You can quickly have this data, you can quickly compress that to the very small uh, number of points as a representation of what's going on in your data set. Same thing as raster, but raster is interesting, right? Because raster itself is, is grid, right? Why I need to take a grid and do it grid, grid, hexagonify my grid, right? You do it because you want to be able to actually, uh, again, cross-reference. You want to have one unit. You don't want to just you know, deal with it. You want to take all of a spatial part out and start doing your actually meaningful analytics. And you can do the same thing. Here's the elevation that I was showing. You can just take your data, boom, it's done. And then what you have here is um, basically another fun stuff of data scientists, right? Scat uh, matrix of a scatter plot. What is that is uh, each point represents one hexagon, right? So now I took all of the spatial part out and I'm just dealing with the data itself. For example, the relationship between noise and complaint. I mean, uh, the, the, the relationship between population and, I don't know, noise. More, more noise, more population you have, you have more noise and things like that, right? Don't read too much on this, because this, this was just an example, right? You don't, you don't find much pattern there, but that was the whole idea, right? So back to, how much time I got? One minute. So back to what I was presenting. Oh, I'm sharing this. Sorry. So you can, you can take any of this layer of data and just take it from point, hexagon, polygon, hexagon, raster, hexagon, and then you unified all of your data. What do you do? You can do more, the second step, which is information to the knowledge, right? You can do a unification, which is what I was just explaining here, 
uh, finding, out, finding out what is the relationship. But not only that, you can do convolutional you know, analytics, which um, uh, Chong is going to come and talk about it right after this. I'm not going to go through that. There are tons of hierarchical probably, uh, uh, properties that you have. For example, if you want to do max pooling, which is going from a uh, lower resolution to the uh, higher resolution to the lower resolution, simply you can use the hierarchical property of it. And finally, you can get wisdom out of your data. Thanks to Nick, Nick presented the, the uh, I think um, some stuff about the visualization that we're working on, the Kepler GLs and others that Shan also um, worked on. You can use those tools now and simply just present your data and start looking at wisdom, not only knowledge, but again, looking at the result of your model. And that's pretty much it. So that's, um, that was all. And again, the link to what I was uh, going through, the notebook is there. It's in, in the repository. 